The people who were annexed, who became German, were more controlled than the occupied people because they didn't want to be Germans, you know, and they, they were German. And so, for example, they could not lock their doors, no keys on the doors, that just a little piece of metal, but a big freedom that somebody can come in your home day or night, always punch for you. The SS did that. It's not the Germans, it's, it's the Nazis and the, it's the SS, the bad people. My husband, he says always, the first Germans who came in, the Wehrmacht, they were acting normal. They were controlled also. And they told to the civilians, don't, don't do nothing against us and nothing will happen to you. Everything changed when the Nazis and the SS came. They were brainwashed, you know, they had special schools, mm -hmm. took the boys very young, put them in castles, and then they were brainwashed, gave them a nice uniform, and that's, and before you know it, it's too late. You are brainwashed. You know, it's easy with children. Mm -hmm. And so he was German, my husband, for more than four years, and then Liberation Day. Did you talk with Bobby Bell at the cemetery? Yes. Yes, yeah. the, the, yeah. the superintendent. The, the guy, yeah, yeah. The guy that knows. That's Oops, good, yes. yeah. He's yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. But uh, maybe that he told you that our liberation day is 9 11. Yes. 9 11 44. That's also strange. Yeah. Yes. And so on the 11, and the soldiers who liberated the area here, the infantry, away from the first division. So they were going in, uh, I mean, very fast. On the 11, they were here. On the next day, they were already in Germany. The problem was the German army was waiting for them there in the woods around the Ark. And then you had the battles, new battles, the battles in the Hurgen Forest, where thousands of men died on both sides. And when those battles were finished, the American army thought, oh, the war is finished now, everything is safe. So, and the old divisions came back on rest here. Well, from the States came new divisions to all the front lines to be sure that everything would stay safe. So my little husband, he was 12 years old, in 44, and something like 110 GIs from the first division again stayed on rest on his parents' farm. And they did all kinds of foolish things, you know. He was a child, but these guys were also children, you know. They were only 18, 19 years old. And so they were decorating Christmas trees, no decorations like we have, but hanging hand grenades and things like that on the tree, you know. <laughs> and then, soldiers, yeah. Yes, soldiers. So like one day he said, one of the soldiers, his uniform was dirty. He washed that in, in ga gasoline, that's what they did, huh? And then he came above the stove to dry it. I mean, <laughs> above the stove, you know, things like that. Uh, kids, you know, and the captain uh, saw that, of course, he raised hell. That's, uh, but then um, they stayed almost three weeks. That's a long time. They were waiting to be sent home and then to be discharged and then being at Christmas with their families again. And then things didn't go like that. Beginning of the Battle of the Birch, so 9, 16 of December. So all the soldiers who were on rest here, not only on my husband's farm, but on other farms, they left in a hurry for these new battles, the Battle of the Birch. And to help the new uh, units who um, <coughs> had difficulties to hold the front lines. And when I say Battle of the Birch, what do you say? Where? Bastogne. Ah, it's not Bastogne. See, that's not the Americans thing. It's not Bastogne. It's not even where the American army tried, uh, the German army tried to come in. The German army tried to come in from the northern shoulder of the Ardennes. That's Eisenborn. Uh, Bichenbach, Willingen, Rockerat, Trinkel, really on the northern shoulder. And they couldn't make it through, and then they went south, and then something happened in Bastogne. But not only Bastogne, also the villages around. You know, I think always the soldiers who were in foxholes for weeks, and it was <coughs> one of the worst winters that we ever had, and the American army didn't have enough warm clothing. And so they suffered more than the soldiers, the airborne, uh, who were in uh, homes, at least uh, in a big city like Bastogne. But you know, Bastogne gets all the credit, see? Huh. The medias and money, that's what it is. <laughs> I mean, something happened there, but it's not just there. And, and the soldiers who were holding the front lines, who let, who, who really let them, let, didn't let them go through the, the German army, I mean, they don't get enough credit for what they did. And they lost so many men, like the 99th Division, the 1st Division, the 2nd Infantry Division. But anyway, so, and all the soldiers left in a hurry from all the farms here, and they left on the farms their personal items. They ju just took the guns and the vehicles, in a hurry, you know, just, to, and all their personal things were left, and so, and we made our museum with the items that the soldiers left on the farm. So these, it's not here, it's not a business, so we don't buy and we don't sell World War II items. Like usually the museums do, they go on eBay or on flea markets, and there is no story behind. All the items that we have were left on the farm or donated by friends. And that's how we are growing. I mean, growing, we just received, I mean, that's just all iron, but it's found in the Hurgen Forest. So now we need to find out clean it and what it is, really. So, and he will find out. We have a library, so, uh, but we have donations, not 
every day, but almost every day. You know, it's because the people are coming here, they feel something. And then now it's in the museum and it will stay, we will never sell anything, even if it's double. That's, uh, we don't make any business about World War II. So it's a little different. <laughs> So that's the story of the museum. And uh, my husband, he makes all the mannequins. So it's really everything that you see is all made by him or me. And making all the frames, it's our life. We are working. Yeah, and all we, uh, I'm answering all. We are, I have letters and letters from the States every day. It's just, uh, it's uh, at Christmas last year, I sent 561 Christmas cards to the States. <laughs> and you don't, maybe that you don't believe me, but after you are going in my kitchen, you will see all the Christmas cards who came back this year, I mean last Christmas. They stay until October on the wall of my kitchen, and then they come down in a big, no, two big shoe boxes, and then the year comes on it, and then it um, takes me a month to make my Christmas cards, and then from the States, they're coming back. Yeah. And usually, Gavin Kirshen helps me a lot to send me. You know, I give him dollars. The shipping is, if I give you a box, I mean, would be three times cheaper than me sending that from here. So, and, and uh, McKinney, he, uh, he always wants to help us, so and that's really great. Sounds good. The relationship that we have with Skinny McKinney. <laughs> 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 Thank you.